Hey guys, so I thought I'd go ahead and do a video for everyone and go over um, some components of email deliverability around DNS records. And so whenever, whenever you're creating a sending domain, whether it be inside of SendGrid, Mailgun, SendInBlue, or whatever email sending platform you choose to use, uh, we want to make sure that we've got proper um, SPF records set up, a DKIM, and a DMARC policy. So that's kind of what I'm going to go over. And I'm going to show you what that looks like from a customer perspective once they receive that email. And so what I'm doing here is that I'm inside of my Go High Level account. I'm in a test location called Bob. So everybody say hi to Bob. Um, so let's go under settings. Let me show you what I've got set up um, in this particular case. So I have a test account set up with Sin and Blue. Um, I've got my reply tracking enabled. And so whenever I go in and send an email, and this will be the same for all of you guys. So it doesn't matter if you're using Send in Blue or what have you. Whenever you're sending email, whether it be in Conversation View, Workflow, or um, Campaign, or whatever, whenever you're sending a, of an email, you know, of course, we want to have whatever name you want to show in the From name field. The From email address is very important. So knowing that I've got a subdomain connected with Send in Blue, I need to make sure that I'm calling that subdomain out. So if you're using Melgun, for example, a lot of you choose to use the MG dot because that's just the example that they provide. Um, the subdomain can be whatever you choose. All right. I uh, if I'm using Melgun um, and I'm knowing knowingly going to be using that subdomain for marketing purposes, I choose to use M dot whatever my domain is dot com. Uh, that's what I choose to use, but it's totally up to you guys. So since I'm using send send in blue, I chose to use SB just has my testing subdomain and the, that's why I'm using that. Um, but it's very important though to call this out because that's tying back the records that you would have created your SPF your DKIM and your DMARC policy your DMARC policy should always be created specific for the subdomain that you've got in operation okay it's very important to do that you can you can set other policy um, pieces within a root domains perspective but um, there's a lot of things that go into it. So it's just better from, from a uh, administrative type standpoint to include a DMARC policy specific for the subdomain that you're using. So I'll get to that in just a moment. Your, your subject, in this case, I choose to use purchase confirmation, and I'm just simply pasting in a body that I typically use when people make a purchase of my products. So I've sent that on. I sent it to a test Gmail account, and it did come into my inbox. So let's start breaking this down. Okay, so we can see here that I've got the sb.funneltakey.com subdomain called out. That's what we want. Um, Send in blue always includes a list unsubscribe header, which is very good for us, especially if we're uh, marketing to folks. Um, so let's do the uh, show details section of this. And we can also see here that we got a list unsubscribe header listed here as well. Um, but let's break it all down. So the reply to line, this is going to be uniquely generated so that we can get a reply back into conversation view within go high level. So that gets enabled whenever we go into settings and we're going back into SMTP and the send in blue line. So anything outside of Melgun will have this enable reply tracking option flag. And so that's always turned on by default. So that's why, so it's turned on. And that's why the reply to field looks the way that it does. So if I were to, re were to reply back right now, that's a unique inbox for go high level specific for the contact that I sent the email to, and I will get that conversation back into that profile. Okay. So that's why that's important. Um, if I had that turned off, if I had it turned off and I sent an email, then that would look entirely different and it would simply show a reply to, um, corresponding to my from name. So it would, I'll more than likely show m at sb.funneltechie.com. All right, has a reply to. Uh, moving on, so we got a meld by line. Uh, we always definitely want to make sure that we have that, and that's referring back to your SPF record. Okay, so if you've got an SPF record published, your mail by line will show up. Your signed by is very import important as well. This is referring back to your DKIM. Okay, so if you've got a DKIM record published, your signed by will show. All right, so now let's go over to more. And let's look at show original. So we're going to break it down a little bit more here. So we can see here that we've got among our critical pieces, SPF, DKIM, and DMARC. We've got a pass across the board. So we've also got complete DMARC alignment. So um, your SPF line. So it's always going to show an IP address listed here. And this is the particular IP that sent this specific email. 
And so if you do not have a dedicated IP address assigned to your account or for this domain, that means that you're among a shared pool of IPs. And that can range from anywhere from two to five different IPs. And each and every email that gets sent through the email sending provider um, gets swapped out between all of those IPs that are a part of your account. Okay, so this IP address will change if you do not have a dedicated IP address. And so that's good and bad from several different fronts. It's good from the perspective of the IP is already warmed up typically. It's already warmed up, so more than likely you can start sending at higher volumes than you typically would if you had a brand new dedicated IP address where you've got to adhere to a warm up policy. Okay, so that's one benefit of using a shared. Um, the downside to a shared pool of IPs is that who knows who else is also using those same set of IPs, right? So you could have some bad apples that are among those. Um, same IP addresses, and if they're doing, uh, if they're sending email uh, and not adhering to best practices, then there's a really good chance that that particular IP will be flagged as spam. Um, so it's going to hurt your uh, IP reputation because you're also sending from those uh, specific IPs. So that's the downside. So we do have a pass with DKIM, and so let's talk about that for a moment. So what this is, is that with every email that gets sent out or gets sent through an email sending provider. Um, there's a, um, a, gener a unique generated signature key that gets appended to it. So that email gets assigned a dedicated signature. It's a private key. It gets sent on through to the receiving server side. The receiving server strips that email open, looks at the DKIM line, sees the private key, and it compares it to the public key that you've got published for DKIM for that specific subdomain. So if there's a match there, then it successfully moves on. Okay, so that's why that's important. That's what happens. And then your DMARC policy. We're getting a pass here because um, your DMARC policy needs to have a match on either your SPF line or your DKIM. Okay, so it looks at one or the other. If it gets a pass, um, um, then it allows it to go on through. Now, your DMARC policy is very important, and I'll, I'll explain this here. So we can see here that this is the uh, embedded portion of the DMARC. And this is what's being called out. So right now I've got my P flag, which is corresponding to my header.from field for this specific subdomain. So I've got my P flag set to none. Whatever you've got published for the P flag, and you don't have anything dedicated uh, specific for these other two flags, then whatever is set for your P flag gets automatically propagated down the line for those other two components. Okay, I'm not going to talk about these two. I'm just going to focus on the P flag. So P flag equals none is actually kind of bad. Okay, we definitely want to uh, move to a, res a restrict policy. So instead of P equals none, we would want to uh, definitely show a P flag equals reject. Okay, so why? So let me give you an analogy. Let's say that I'm a malicious person and I'm looking at your sending domain and I try to send email to a set of contacts claiming to be from you. All right. So first of all, let's say that my SPF line is set with a soft fill. So typically I'm able to get past your SPF. Okay. So if your DMARC policy is set to none, then that spoofed email I'm claiming to be from you will reach the intended destination. Okay. It will land in the spam folder, but let's say that that person actually sees the email. They happen to open it. Um, they're seeing the, the language that is being used in that email. Okay, so that's hurting your brand. It's hurting you from your from a business standpoint because that's not the same language that you would typically use. From an inbox standpoint, the inbox has taken note. It's claiming to be from you, so it's looking at the header.from field. It's 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 actually captured that. So now it's a part of the data pool for that inbox provider. Um, that is now going to cause your domain to suffer because it did reach the inbox, and now that header.from field claiming to be from your your domain has been flagged. So now any legitimate email that you send forward um, could potentially suffer because of what just happened. So how do we get around that? If we have this P flag set to reject, now that receiving server is going to see it and it's going to say, hey, there's not a match with DKIM. There's not a match with SPF. I'm going to completely reject this um, email and it's not going to be allowed to be sent anywhere. It will not go to spam. It will not even go to trash, okay? It will not go anywhere. So it just, it completely destroys it. So no one sees it. So it protects your brand and it protects your, um, your sending domain. Yeah, so that's why that's very important. So that's what, that's what that is. Um, 
what else can we talk about here? So let's, uh, let's go in and start looking at those different components from a um, configuration standpoint. What do these records look like? Well, for this particular subdomain, I'm going to look at um, the SPF line. So I'm going to look at sb.funneltechie.com, and I'm just using this tool um, to look at the SPF line. So this is what that record would look like, and so I'm going to break it down. So inside of this SPF record, I'm calling out the versioning. Okay, so this is uh, SPF version one. This is the same, the, going to be the same for everyone. Your SPF record, uh, the different components inside of the record are separated with spaces. Okay, so there's a space between SPF and include, and there's a space between um, the include statement and the MX portion, and then there's a space with uh, the tilde all. All right. So uh, versioning one, uh, the include statement is just saying that I'm giving Sin and Blue permission to send email on my domain's behalf. Um, the MX portion of this is not necessarily important. This is just the mail exchange piece of that. Um, and then the tilde all, the tilde means that it's a soft fill. So we get, we get a soft fill with a tilde, um, but I'm always wanting people to use the hyphen all. Um, the reason though this becomes very tricky is that these inbox provider or these email sending providers, whenever they do the validation checks, and you've probably seen this inside of Mailgun, they want you to verify it. So if you did not have, if you didn't put the tilde all, then it will not verify it. Um, not that it's wrong, but they simply just will not verify it. Uh, but once you get it verified, that's all we're really after. Um, but what's happening here is that with the tilde all, you're saying that if, if a record does not match the include, the receiving side of it will still allow the email to come through, um, but it will be marked and flagged. Um, it could go to spam uh, if it didn't match, but it's still going to mark that particular email. Okay, so that can mean some bad things in the future. Um, that's why I'm always trying to also push people into the um, hyphen all portion. Um, the reason that we've got to be careful with some of the things that we implement here is that um, if it's a brand new subdomain and you've just newly created it for Mailgun, Cinnablue, um, SynGrid, what have you, then it's safe to use restrictive type policies. Um, if it's if it's been out in the wild for a while, you may be you may have that same subdomain attached to other email sending providers. So if you don't have things correctly included, then you could screw things up. So you just got to be careful. You got to be mindful of where else um, that subdomain would be included. Um, to send email on your domain's behalf. So just be aware of that. All right, so now I don't know what my uh, DKIM selector is, so I'm not gonna show you that. Um, there's really no need to, but I am gonna show you the actual DMARC policy. So the DMARC policy is always specified with underscore DMARC. Let me get it right here. I gotta put a period in. So uh, DMARC.SB.FunnelTechie.com. Okay, so this is a uh, specific record that um, Sin and Blue had me put in, but let's go over it. We're going to um, do versioning one of the DMARC policy, and each component within this record is separated with semicolons. Okay, so that's different from your SPF, so just keep that in mind. Um, so DMARC version one, we can see here that we got an SP flag or a, a P flag specified as none. Uh, SP was not even needed here, we could have removed that. Uh, your RUA line in your RUF line. So what is this? This is for any um, DMARG aggregation report to be sent your way. And you can specify an inbox that you own. It doesn't matter what domain it is. You can specify whatever you want. Um, but in this case, Melgun, or I'm sorry, Sin and Blue does a really good job of it because they're sending DMARC policy reports um, back toward the dashboard. And so you can view those reports inside of that dashboard, which is awesome. Um, the RUA line is just specifying just normal components of a DMARC aggregation report, um, giving you just, you know, uh, critical pieces that you would need. Whereas the RUF is specifying more of a robust type setup. So you're going to still get aggregation reports, um, but it's going to be very detailed for, uh, it's going to have very granular type information embedded in that. Um, these reports become very useful though, if there's ever any, any, uh, sending issues with your domain, you can actually go into these reports, uh, put them into a reader, and look at what platform actually sent email claiming to be from you. So if you are being spoofed, you can go back in and find out that uh, particular information. Um, the PCT line, uh, this is just the percent of email 
that is that needs to adhere to this policy. So in this case, uh, it's saying that 100% of all emails being sent through uh, this subdomain um, gets uh, basically the the mark policy gets appended to. All right. So if you didn't include the uh, the PCT line, then by default, all 100% of all emails uh, do apply. So you can you can also remove this. So those are the uh, pieces of that DMARC policy. And again, we always want to set your P flag to reject kind of the same principle that I mentioned about SPF. As long as you understand what systems um, are sending email on your domain's behalf and that's properly set up with your SPF line, then you can include a, a reject policy here. And that's what we would want. So I hope that helps guys. Hope, hopefully uh, I didn't confuse anyone. If you got any questions about this, feel free to let me know.